the latest loco to join the fleet is on this new model of Gresley's W1 loco. But before it can enter service, it has to go through the weathering works. The first stage of this process is to spray the running gear and chassis with a few coats of frame dirt. Always remembering to turn the wheels regularly so as not to miss out any sections of the works. The next step is to give the loco body a general misting over with a weathered black. This tones down the plastic sheen of the factory finished loco. Next we apply some burned black along the top of the boiler and the cab. Then we add some dirty black into the mix of the spray cup to provide some variation in colour. This mixture is applied to sections of the loco in order to highlight places where dirt would probably more readily appear when the loco was in everyday use. And finally, to complete the painting section, we now add some burnt umber into the mix to give the paint a reddish tinge. This is applied to areas that would normally be affected by such discoloration, such as the tender chassis and inside the top of the coal bunker. Now we want to put a sheen back on the loco on top of the newly applied paintwork in order to simulate an engine shed clean and wipe down. In order to do this we apply some Johnson's Clear Floor Polish and this is the first application of two which will be used to produce an acceptable finish. The W1 Loco was a unique engine with a 464 wheel arrangement. It was in fact a rebuild from Sir Nigel Gresley's high pressure boiler experiment with the so called Hush Hush Loco. Johnson's Clear is very easy to apply and is self leveling, so you are virtually always guaranteed to get a good finish once it is dried. And now, after applying the detail pack, the lamps and the crew, the final step is to add the coal.
I have to be very sparing with this as I only have a limited amount. So first I add some imitation coal to build up the bunker to the correct level. And then it is finally topped up with some of my real coal, which has been on rather a long journey. I obtained it from one of the coalmen on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway Heritage Line, who told me it had been shipped in from Peru in South America, as it was the only place they could obtain the quality coal they needed these days. So finally, here we have the W1 as delivered straight out of the box, which has now been transformed into this grubby loco, ready to start another day's arduous work. Some people may say that's a good loco spoilt, but that's the beauty of model railways. We can each do our own thing and just enjoy it. And now she's been readied on the turntable before she heads off to the station to start her daily schedule. But that's another story to be told another day.